Wiener, 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 wiener. One wiener next to another wiener. I'm sorry, South Park has ruined that fucking theme for me for fucking ever. Every single every single time I ever hear that theme, I'm gonna be thinking wiener, wiener, wiener. <laughs> I mean, it's like fucking hell. And now because of you, our fans are gonna think the same. The only reason why I started that is because, like you said, we have nothing to open this fucking thing with. <laughs> Isn't that promising, kids? I know this is gonna be a, this is gonna be an excellent conversation. Don't you want to stick around for the next half an hour? Yeah, seriously, you know, you can either listen to us or actually just spend your time more constructively waiting for April six when Game of Thrones season four starts. And as a person who's uh, <clears throat> peaked under the cover of the books, um, peaked under the dress. Oh, I saw everything. <laughs> but it's it's gonna be a fucking crazy ass season. It's gonna be amazing. Oh, yeah. um, think think Red Wedding times 10. Shit's going to go down. Everything's Nothing's going to be the same after this is over. And uh, through the blogosphere, we've heard that Jar George R.R. R. Martin, the creator of the stories, Jar 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 Binks, Jar Jar Binks Martin, he's going to have Red Wedding. <laughs> Woo! As long as he gets killed, I don't mind. Anyways, so George R.R. R. Martin is announcing that he's actually thinking, he's actually pushing for a Game of Thrones movie. Which I think is a fucking horrible idea. Mm-hmm. I can't explain it any better than that. It's a fucking horrible idea. Because his, his reasoning is is that the finale of the entire show, mm -hmm. you know, when it, whenever it gets written or whenever it gets produced, half a decade from now, it's going to be too big for television. <clears throat> because his reasoning is, is uh, drag, the dragons get pretty big, you know? Oh, yeah. Um... So he's thinking about he's he's actually mulling it over. There's nothing been absolutely nothing concrete about it though. But he's been kind of, kind of pushing for the idea of having Game of Thrones wrap up with a movie, a full theatrical release. Mm -hmm. Which, needless to say, is a very asinine idea. Yeah, because I mean, not to jump the gun though, but what are people gonna think when you know people who aren't who people are moviegoers but aren't. Into the Game of Thrones franchise, yeah. Right. Well, they got to have a 50 fucking minute long montage of what happened previously on Game of Thrones, all eight seasons. <laughs> oh, Christ. Well, the recap they did for season three, uh, or in preparation for season four, was only like 50 minutes long. So I think... <laughs> only 50 minutes long! <laughs> yeah. So I think you are actually being quite modest when you say that it's going to be a 50 minute recap. It's probably going to be like... The two hours of the two and a half hour long movie. No, no. There's actually going to be a trilogy of recaps before the oh. actual film. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then uh, Peter Jackson will produce and he'll add some, you know, elves and shit. He'll add Orlando Bloom. And... <laughs> well, you know what? As long as he gets killed in brutal Game of Thrones style, I don't mind. Oh, God. I would masturbate furiously. <laughs> I don't deny it, man. That'd be awesome. I'd be like, yes, Orlando Bloom's dead! Well, not that our fan base knows what kind of kinky fetishes you have. It's not a fetish, it's just a wish. See that fucking? I, I, I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of Orlando Bloom. So, well, you're you're not a fan of Orlando, or Blando Loom? No, absolutely not. Oh, I mean, so, so, so some of the trees in the background had more personality than he did. So, well, you gotta remember, he's a noble elf, and elves are aloof and they're detached, and uh... which is why I like Game of Thrones because there's no fucking elves. But um. Before I actually expound why an idea of a Game of Thrones film is uh, an, a terrible proposition from a marketing standpoint, I think, um, I mean, I like the guy, R.R. R. Martin, I like him. I like his... Martin? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> Martin? Yeah, whatever his name is, or George R. 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 Martin. Anyways, George R.R. R. Martin, there we go. Klaatu, Verata. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what I did there. Uh, anyways. I like his writing style, and I like the world he's managed to create, but I do think that some criticism needs to be applied here, because I kind of feel like his reasoning for a Game of Thrones movie is that he's basically kind of buying time, because he has yet to still wrap up the two final the books. The last two books, yes. Yeah, exactly. so you told me that he's actually kind of planning, or, or he kind of wants HBO to take the next three or four books and split each and every one of them into yes. two halves, so, so that we have, like... A total of 10 or 12 seasons, if my math is correct. About 10 seasons, yeah, that's kind of what he's thinking of doing. A total of 10 seasons, which, I mean, not even Dexter got that far, not even Breaking Bad really got that far. Uh, because they didn't need to. They need to, right, but it doesn't matter whether or not Game of Thrones needs to, it depends on whether HBO 
wants to do it. And I don't think they do. Because I remember like reading an interview with uh, one of the showrunners uh, from about like six months ago or so. And I think their plan is a total of seven or eight seasons. Which to me seems like a reasonable amount given like the kind of scope of the world and the events that are transpiring. Uh, that seems like a reasonable number. But going beyond that, uh, no, it's I don't really see any point, especially, especially, and this is something that you've told me, uh, considering that the next two or three books, they kind of dip in, I don't want to say quality, but in terms of like... Pacing? Pacing is probably a better way of saying it. Um, my friend Ramin, uh, Zeems, by the way you guys know him. Oh yeah, that memorable character. Yep, you know, he's read all the books, and he says that the the pacing is off in Feast of Crows and Dance with Dragons. Okay. And uh, the way that they also split the characters, like half the characters are in one book and the other half of the characters are in the other book, uh, also feels kind of uh, uneven. Mm-hmm. And then, the from what, I, from what I have read, not in the books, but like on the internet, um, on wikis and stuff like that, even on like the Westeros wiki, um... Originally, George R. R. Martin was going to kind of skip skip five years into the future. That was his original plan, from my understanding. Um, and, okay. Yeah, he's he supposed to end on like the the sword, uh, the Storm of Swords, and just like go right into the five years later kind of scenario. But then all of a sudden, he's like, "Well, you know, I better explain what happens during those five years," and that's why we have Feast of Crows and Dance of Dragons. And uh, yeah, he. Like I said, Ramin kind of thinks that the pacing is, the pacing is a little off, um, and apparently some other people believe that also. So um, it might be a lackluster couple of seasons. Yeah. After after coming off of Storm of Swords. Yeah, especially after season four, where as you said, things seem, yeah, where shit seems to go down, where they're actually upping the ante, um, which is great because. Uh, just a couple of words about season three. I liked season three. I, I kind of understood what they were trying to do there, but at the same time, after season two, I kind of felt like y you could tell that they took a single book and kind of split it in half because uh, you know everything seemed to lead into the Red Wedding, and as memorable and as shocking as the Red Wedding was, uh, you know personally, I felt like it could have happened like somewhere in the middle of the season, and it would have had the same kind of effect. Because otherwise, uh, a lot of the screen time was also allotted to subplots that didn't really go anywhere, uh, such as what's his name, Jack Snow, uh, getting on with John, the... John Snow, not Jack Snow. You're thinking Jack Frost and John Snow together? <laughs> that one Jack Snow character. <laughs> oh yeah, that one Jack Snow and what's his face, Je Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, that Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> Pretty fucking close, actually. Pretty close, but I'm basically a lot closer. A lot closer in Jack Snow. <laughs> He sounds like a fucking hard-boiled detective. <laughs> this is Jack Snow, P.I., Private Dick. Then she walked into my room. Yeah, well, I was about to say, well, he certainly has the, the same kind of problems with with the broads as, a, as a, like, a Humphrey Bogart-type character would have. Um, Humphrey Bogart getting shot with arrows. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you love me, Sam. It's like, oh, and then, if only you knew, babe. Um, but yeah, I felt like the... <laughs> well, that sounded like Frodo. <laughs> Tell me you love me, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> well, was it, well, what was it that you told me that it seems... Play it again, Sam, is what he says. Play it again, not tell me you love me. No, I was... <laughs> it's, it's even more creepy when you put it into the context of Casablanca. I was... God damn it, I <laughs> Tell was, me you love me, Sam. I was thinking of the Maltese Falcon when, when, where his name is Sam Spade. Okay, yeah, okay, I was thinking, um, play it again, Sam, off of Casablanca, also starring Humphrey Bogart, so... Listen, my brain might be a mush today, but I'm not that, you know... I'm telling you, just just take a handful of coffee beans and just eat them raw. It works. Okay, and now our fans know what recreational drugs we take. Um... <laughs> coffee, the hardest drug of them all. If I, if, if I had a spoon in a syringe... <laughs> yeah... Anyways, back on topic. So, Jack Snow getting it on with the wildling. John Snow! <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Jack Snow? Who the fuck is Jack Snow? I don't know. You've told God me. God damn it. <laughs> so, back on topic. Jack Snow <laughs> is driving in a car with fucking Jessica Alba and the yellow man's chasing after him. <laughs> Oh, 
fuck me. Oh, that's it. I have a, Ooh, I have a, we are keeping this shit. We are keeping this shit. <laughs> I, I have officially turned into you. Jesus. That's not, And trust me, that's not a compliment. <laughs> oh, Christ. You know what? Okay, okay. Here, John, just, John Snow. Just call him Snow. You got that part right. <laughs> <laughs> just call him Snow and go from there. Okay, so the subplot involving John Snow and the Wild Lady. <laughs> I was waiting for you to say John Spade. <laughs> okay, so uh, back on topic. So the subplot involving... <laughs> Oh Christ! Like this is the this is the total opposite of the DC discussion where we were serious and on topic and actually just when we're incoherent and not even funny. <laughs> <clears throat> we're sorry, folks. We are so fucking sorry. <laughs> anyway, so the subplot involved. Wait, well, why why am I apologizing for you? <laughs> because someone has to go ahead. I'm, I'm not ahead. I'm not apologizing for anything. I regret nothing. Go ahead. Anyway, so the subplot involving Jon Snow and the Wild Lady was one of them because, like I told you numerous times, they were leading up into the two of them sort of like rebelling against both the, the Night Watch and the Wild Tribe, and at the end, out of nowhere for absolutely no reason, he just, you know, basically turns turns his back on her and says like, well, you know, sorry, the sex was wonderful, but I gotta go back to the Brotherhood of Blue Balls because, <laughs> because he's got Sam. <laughs> Or something. <laughs> Thanks for the six. I'm going back to celibacy. <laughs> you know her confidence is just shattered. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like one of those stories where um, I forget what terrible movie. Oh, it was actually that terrible movie. What's your number? Where in the trailer, like she's trying to hook up with all you know all her past boyfriends, and like one of the boyfriends is like, "Oh yeah, I remember you. You know what? You did me a great favor because up until you, I wasn't sure I was gay, but now I know." <laughs> So it's the same thing here, you know. Like, yeah, I kind of tried it. Uh, listen, sorry, but I like Sam better. You know, he's got <laughs> he's got more meat on him. If you know. What oh, I mean. okay, we're done. I mean, this is getting too close to Hobbit territory. Mm -hmm. Ooh, zing. Yeah. So yeah, season three, um, a good season overall. But that's when I feel like uh, that that the, there were there, there were certain pacing issues because, as much as I appreciate the the show for. The dialogues and the character, um, the character development, and the the contrast of ideologies and goals, because because really that's that's what got me into the show in the first place. Because mm. you watch the first season, and despite the fact that the show being described as like a, as a fantasy series, it really felt more like a historical drama to me. Because really, if you know, with dragons, well, dragons don't don't really come into it until like the the mid the midpoint of season one. So, and even then, at, at that point... No, it, the, very, the very end of season one. Yeah, pretty much. And at that point, it was still, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the more mythological... It's a lot more subdued. Yeah, a lot of the more in mythological stuff was under question. Because, you know, yeah, sure, they pray to these gods, but there's no there's no evidence of the gods, of these gods and dragons and the other... Or the dragons or the walkers and the white walkers or others. Well, well we see the white walkers, but they're, they're never specified as what they are. I just remember the opening where you've got these, you know, scattered body parts and they're no longer there and that felt like a horror movie, a proper horror movie to me uh so yeah uh, and i think that something i'm concerned kind of concerned about is that the the magic element is becoming more prevailing uh and like you told me i think yeah this is something you told me that george r, r. martin didn't even initially want to put dragons into the story but it i think his, i think the joke he told was that his wife made him put in dragons yeah so that's a bit kind of like alarming isn't it but yeah if 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 season four is actually going to up the ante and there's going to actually be uh you know this the plot is actually going to move forward then i am content with that you know by all means but here's a question how would how would a movie affect any of this because i mean you, you like, like like you've explained they built up these characters they built up this world through x amount of seasons how many ever seasons are going to make out of this thing mm -hmm. and all of a sudden for the last the last chapter of the book, for instance, they're gonna make it a movie, a theatrical release. Or, no, sorry, they're not gonna make it. But George R. R. Martin's kind of hinting at pushing for it. Mm -hmm. How does it make any sense? I mean, can you, can you imagine? Like, I think the I think you used the analogy earlier of buying the books, and all of a sudden you get to the last chapter, and the chapter's missing out of the last book, and you're like, okay, where the fuck's the chapter? And all there is 
his little card saying buy your tickets in in 20, 20, 2020 for the Game of Thrones movie, and you're like, fuck you. Pre-order the movie tickets now. Yeah, exactly. It's coming next year. It's coming next I mean, year. You, you can't just jump venues like that. You really, I mean, I, you really I, can't. I know, I know other ser- shows and series have kind of done the same thing. Uh, 24 has done it. The X-Files has you know, slapped a movie right in the middle and right at the end of their, their run. Mm-hmm. And uh, even the beloved Firefly had a a movie finale. But the difference between the Firefly movie or series finale in movie form was that the show was fucking canceled. Yeah. And, you know, there's still a legion of fans saying, it's unresolved, we gotta know what happened. So, you know, they made a, a movie to appease the fans. Yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't a cash grab. It wasn't, you know, hey, let's... That was basically the last ditch effort by Joss Whedon, you know. To exactly, it was last ditch, ditch effort to put some to, to, to offer some, some closure, good, yeah, closure, yeah, to the fans. closure to his, yeah, to the fans of the show. Whereas, if you have a successful, uh, so far at least, um, television sh- series on HBO, why in the name of God would you turn around and make that into a movie? I mean, it's. Because to me it doesn't make to me it doesn't make any sense. I mean, you're just gonna confuse the shit out of the average Joe moviegoer unless, like you said, give him that two hour long fucking flashback. Oh yeah, the entire trilogy of flashbacks is gonna be like a montage of everything that happened in the show. Yeah. Well, the, well, like I said, other other series tried to do the same thing in the past. Although I would argue that in the case of something like X Files, at least with the f- second film or whichever film came out came out like ten years after the fact. It was more of a case of them pushing a, a, a recognized, you know, a recognized and beloved brand, like you know, hey, it's just, it's just been ten years, we can still make a movie and people will go and watch it because people still remember what X Files is. But the difference between that and what they're trying to do with Game of Thrones, because I I remember I remember hearing rumors of uh, what's his name Vince Gilligan sort of thinking of doing the same thing for Breaking Bad because like the. Fifth- <laughs> Which thankfully never came to fruition, um, because again, it was the same kind of reasoning. You know, you're they're, they're apping the ante. Things are becoming more and more, um, you know, tense. Somehow that warrants a two hour two hour long feature length film because you know chase scenes and explosions, etc. And this is why I said this is why I said earlier that thankfully it never came to fruition because of the I don't want to say like a restraining or a limited nature of television, but you know, it, it it is a case of that. You know, they have less to, less budget to work with. So because of that, they try to come up with the best possible hmm, spectacle, I guess, with the kind of means they have. So it's a lot more subdued. It's a lot more restrained, and it's less. You know, oh no, chase scenes. You know, oh no, they 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 figure out who Heisenberg is. So now the police is chasing after him, and is he's driving like a Mustang or something, and he's gonna out you know outwit the police and whatnot. Instead, it was it was subdued. It was intelligent, and it was the best possible way to finish up the series. Yep. Uh, so, and e- e- even then, didn't they make like the season finale or the series finale like two hours long anyway? I think I think it was longer than the regular episodes. It was longer. But by about like fifteen or twenty minutes, if you exclude the commercials, because a lot of that time was commercials. Uh, but yeah, they basically made it a special episode, and they've they've ended the series the same way they begun it, uh, i.e., on television. So because really, you know, as 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 popular as Breaking Bad was, you know, all the all the fifteen or seventeen million viewership that it had, is seventeen million people enough to warrant a full theatrical release, or? And this is something I think we kind of touched upon in our Platinum Age of Television uh, podcast, albeit briefly, is would a concept like Breaking Bad work as a film? I don't think it would. I don't think it would either. Um, having the end of a television show be turned into a movie, what was average Joe Public going to think about it? You know, oh, let's go watch a movie honey and then they you know go out to the theater and oh what's this breaking bad thing yeah and your throat you're thrown in at the very end of the series you don't know who's who you don't know what the fuck's going on you don't know what the hell happened and it's like oh well yeah well shit. well the thing is that you know average joe might recognize the brand it's like oh breaking bad i've heard of it but because it's a film he might think that it's like a film adaptation like they've taken the series and they've decided to turn it into a film so he thinks that if he walks into the theater uh, he'll have a firm understanding of what's going on because they're, well, you know, no offense to the movie business, but they're going to dumb down the entire thing to make it more digestible for him. 
And I think the same pro you know, I think that the Game of Thrones is going to encounter the same kind of problem should they decide to go down that route, in that people might recognize the Game of Thrones, uh, you know, brand, but they'll most likely think that it's like a film reboot sort of thing, or a film relaunch, or a spin-off thing, because it, it needs it needs to be a standalone. Yeah, because you know, alone. if you, if you're gonna go and make like a Game of Thrones film uh, set in the same universe but starring different characters, you know, by all means, I don't mind because they do that, because they do this crap all the time. You know, there's a popular show or whatever, and they release like standalone spin-off comics or whatever. Yep. You know. With within the movie, they can build again from the ground up. Yeah, and you know, just introduce basic elements that it's a more subdued universe. Pro well, pr proper proper storytelling. Yeah. Pretty much. So if it's going to be a standalone thing, then, you know, by all means, no problem. But if they're actually going to push the ending of the series um, into the movie theaters, then, first of all, that's going to piss off the, the TV viewership because there's not going to be any proper finale, you know. Like, there's going to be all the eight season, uh, seasons, and at the end, like you said, it's just going to be a title card saying, like, thanks for watching, uh, tune in in about two years when we make the movie, you know. If, if they don't plan to have the movie done and ready to go immediately in theaters after yeah which technically they shouldn't have a problem with because like i said game of thrones is a recognized brand but at the same time at the same time it's also not something i would imagine ever seeing on the big screen because when you think of fantasy or the kind of fantasy that hollywood pushes you think of stuff like word of the rings or what was that um star wars knockoff with dragons like from 2005 aragon or whatever. aragon yeah, like you, you think of that hackneyed stuff, right? And like Game of Thrones, it's more about the characters and character motivations and political intrigue and whatnot. I don't, you know, I, I, I can't imagine it ever being on the big screen without it going through the, the prism of what, you know, how, like, you know, the gigantic checklist they have of what needs to be in a movie. Like, okay, we need to have a chariot chase scene and we need to have. What's his name? Jon Snow fight against a giant dragon, and we need to have a sexy. Well, there's a lot of sex scenes in the show anyway, but uh, you know, <laughs> you're starting to sound like Cartman for a second. And then we need to have Jon Snow fight against a dragon, and then, but ma'am, <laughs> sorry, I'm. And then Kyle, he said this. Well, that's pretty much. The, oh, that's pretty much the mentality that Hollywood executives have. You know, oh, we gotta have this, and we gotta have that, and you know, we, we gotta introduce our romantic subplot. You know. Uh oh. George R. R. Martin's airplanes are flying over your head, Max. Oh yeah, they're just—they're about to carpet bomb me. <laughs> for for Miss Prince. It's a dragon. The dragons get pretty big, you know. Oh yeah, and 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 they need all those Michael Bay CGI textures and polygons, you know, because spectacle, you know, because when I think of Game of Thrones, I think of mindless spectacle, you know, and a bunch of and a bunch of flyover people sitting and pushing popcorn in their face for two hours. And I, I think it's important to bring up the fact that so far. This whole Game of Thrones movie concept is just purely conjecture, because yes, yes, it is just conjecture. It's just George R. R. Martin's kind of quiet rambling. Yeah, wish, wishful thinking on his part. Yeah, and I, I can understand why he'd be wishful to have a movie. I mean, you know, that's kind of the ultimate goal. Well, not the ultimate goal, but it's one of the biggest fantasies for any writer. Yeah, is to have their book become a movie seen by millions. So I, 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 I fault him nothing for that. But he has to realize, if this is indeed what he's thinking, he needs to realize that he's done something better yes. than a movie. He has, he's made a movie that is currently, let's see, 60 minutes times 10 times 4 is 2,400 minutes long. He's made a 40 hour long movie. Yep, pretty much. So, uh... And it's, it's detailed, it's beloved by people. Why would he? Why would he want to confine himself to a maximum of three hours on a big screen? So, plus the idea that you know, oh, if it's going to be a movie, it's going to be available to more audiences. I actually kind of question that because, um, if, like we said, if the film is basically going to be a, a serious resolution, then you're basically cutting off a major part of the general audience, and you're basically saying that, oh, it's it's a film for the fans, so to speak, right? And albeit we've seen some successful campaigns to get like the Veronica, I'm, I'm thinking of like the Veronica Mars movie, 
where the fa the fans actually you know pitched in and they made that serious finale movie for it. But again, the thing about that film is that because it's a serious finale, uh, and because I have absolutely no interest in the Veronica Mars series, I have no reason to go and watch the film. You know, and I'd imagine the same applies to a lot of other people who have no interest. In, in Game of Thrones. Yeah, pretty much. Because you know what? If you're interested in the series, if you're interested in the in the plot, in the lore, uh, in the mythos... You you're watching it right now. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't understand why he'd want to make a movie. I mean, it's it could be it could it could be a matter of ego, or but every like I said, you know, there's there's two fantasies for for that writers commonly have, and one is to see their content as a movie on the silver screen, beloved by millions, and the second part is you know just the fact that you know you want your stuff to be read and appreciated by millions. I guess it's a, and a, a, he's already gotten the best of both worlds. Yeah, pretty much. Although I, I, I'm afraid that it might be a case of like, oh, the sky's the limit, you know. I, I, I want to see how far I can go with Possibly. this Possibly. Well, let me ask you this. Like I said, Hollywood and, I guess, television, which is kind of like the, the, the movie business's little brother at this point, they, they are kind of reactionary and they do tend to follow trends. So, um, if, say, Game of Thrones decides to do this stuff, where it's going to run for like seven or eight seasons, and then at the end, they're going to turn the finale into like a special two-hour-long feature-length film. I'm afraid that it's going to released it released in theaters, not on the television series in the or the television station. You got to yeah, possibly possi possibly possibly severely dumbed down and or castrated to make it more digestible for the you know the popular um, the general populace. Uh, I am afraid it's actually going to have a detrimental effect on other series because what does that say about television as as a viable medium? If at the end it seems to be like a, a you know what do you call it a pla like a platform to popularity you know to towards movies you know like you know what I mean? I yeah I, I see this if, if this were to actually happen and again this is all conjecture um, if this was to happen it would set a bad precedent mm -hmm. for television in general that you know oh well we, we can tell all the story shit behind this on the television station but to get the real money and to really reach people you gotta just, you know you gotta keep it in movies you know you, you got you gotta you gotta have it in in a movie theater uh -huh. where people want to see it and it's like bullshit bullshit mm -hmm. i mean you, you can't you can't treat television as like well the second man yeah I mean, you can't you, you can't downplay television this much when television is in my opinion beating the shit out of Hollywood mm -hmm. as far as like you know taking risks and uh, you know delivering genuinely interesting content yeah I'm not saying I'm not saying all of it's great no all you but... have to all you have to do is look on fucking true TV and fucking facepalm yourself retarded <laughs> oh yeah but your, um your, your favorite you channel know, yes <sighs> fucking lizard like towing the most stupid fucking show I've ever seen in my fucking life fucking hate every bit of it and I'll say fuck again just to emphasize this fucking point but uh, you know Showtime HBO they've really taken a lot of chances with these series and they're fucking phenomenal series I mean they, they've, they've told stories that are fucking bigger and better than anything else we've really seen in Hollywood in a damn long time. I mean, even like A&E A &E has The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are these are amazing, amazing stories. Wait, and it's wait. Because they have... A and what? A and E. I think you're thinking of ABC. Or AMC, sorry. Is it AMC? It's, ah. it's AMC. Okay. A and C then. Yeah, well, that's your own personal Jack Snow moment. I know. My, I, I'm entitled to one after you've had so many. <laughs> Zing! Zing! Oh no, you didn't! Oh yes, I did. Oh snap! Oh burn! You're the man now, dog. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wow. Anyways, as you were saying. Anyways, um. I'm sorry, I forgot what I was saying after the Sean Connery fighting Forrester. <laughs> I have such a short fucking term memory. But it's, okay, okay, yeah, it's, it's totally downplaying the fact that television, they're acting like television's not a viable medium. Mm -hmm. And it's a perfectly fucking viable medium. It's beating the shit out of everything I've seen in Hollywood as of late. They're telling more interesting stories. They have the time to tell more interesting stories. The fucking cast that they put together in a lot of these things are freaking mind-bendingly mind awesome. Even stars are leaving Hollywood to go to television. I mean, just look at... Uh, Steve Buscemi. Uh, yeah, exactly. In Broadwalk Empire. 
Broadwalk Empire. Yeah, and you also have um, some. Well, you have absolute great talent behind Game of Thrones too. I mean, yeah, Sean Bean in season one, and all, all the all the guys who. Well, even like uh, Tyron Lannister. Whoever, like, I, I'm horrible with names, so but you, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, absolutely great, great performances all around. Mm-hmm. Um, especially that Joffrey guy. Oh my God, he's an amazing actor to make to to be such a nice guy in real life, but that makes a character that ever, everyone fucking hates. Yeah, that's real. I mean, that, that's. Yeah, that's talent. Great writing, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you know what they could do? Instead of um, bringing the end of Game of Thrones or even like remaking it for the, the screen, and I'm not saying they're remaking it either, mm-hmm. but what they should do is just make it a standalone movie. A completely standalone movie like, um, I think it's called The Hedge Knight. That's one of the what? additional books. George R. R. Martin wrote a uh, kind of like a inside the same universe as Game of Thrones kind of book called The Hedge Knight. Okay. And if they turn like something like that into a movie, or at least just, you know, uh, something something that can uh, stand alone, but maybe maybe have Peter Dinklage show up as like a cameo in the same universe or <laughs> you know, something like that. It, it would be it would be more interesting. Yeah. Um Tyre- it'd be also make more sense if you just keep the story self contained. Yeah. Tyron Lannister just, you know, walks on screen, tips his head and's like, Hey kids, you know, how you doing? And walks <laughs> I just came here to grab a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> Grabs his paycheck on the way out, you know, ka <laughs> But you know what? You're, you're actually. I, I, I've just remembered about this, but it, I, I think they could easily do it a standalone thing because they are doing something similar, but with a video game. Because don't forget, Telltale is working on a Game of Thrones video game now, and I don't think it's actually going to feature any of the TV characters. It's actually, it's actually going to be an entirely different standalone thing. So, mm-hmm. you know, they are actually experimenting with that. So, you know what? If you are going to go ahead and make a Game of Thrones featuring film. You know, have it be something different. Have it be focused on other characters because it's it, it's a vast world, and you can do all sorts of shit with it. So mm-hmm. you know, what if you want to tell new bold stories? You know, by all means, just have it be something else. Because otherwise, uh, because in that case, you are not destroying the integrity of the TV series. You are not dumbing down the TV series' finale. And you know what? If the movie sucks, it's it's its own spin-off little thing that, like I said, doesn't affect the the credibility or the integrity of the TV show. It's kind of like what you said about Ghost in the Shell or Eyes, right? Yeah, albeit you know, I'd argue that Ghost in the Shell or Eyes has kind of managed to pick itself up with episode two. So you know. Oh no, I'm I'm just saying that even if people don't like. Oh yeah, the standalone movie they could still treat it as like you know okay well this has happened on the other side of it and it's not gonna affect my perception of what yeah it still doesn't the affect TV the shows. yeah it still doesn't affect the original 1995 Memoir Osha film or the superb Ghost in the Shell standalone complex TV series so if it's not your thing you know just don't watch it and it doesn't really affect anything and uh, remember if the show sucks I'm still expecting those go fuck yourself emails. <laughs> 